Any questions? Okay, well that's a quick review. Next thing on the agenda. <coughs> Using active voice. This presentation is especially for you if you got some style feedback on your first introductory email homework. You got some style feedback of pass, 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 or awk pass, awk pass. That means that right from that first get go write example, it seems that you are a big fan of passive voice for a particular reason. Or with what you've already gotten back if you had an inferently graded, or what you will get back today for the committee progress email report. If the style feedback, and remember the committee progress email report, grammar and style did not, they weren't on the checklist, but I am offering feedback on that. So if in the margins of what you get back today, or what you've already gotten back for the progress report, if you had some pass, 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 or some unk pass, or some awk pass, then again, this is a slideshow for you. Okay. And the active passive voice page of the grammar worksheet, important for you to practice. If you haven't gotten feedback like that yet, then you've probably got this figured out already. But. So, active and passive voice. So, first of all, the concepts. Uh, we're up with subjects, actions, and objects, hopefully. Really basic, really important that you understand what those are, how they work in sentences, how to spot them, how to manipulate them. That's like the wax on, wax off. You know, the Karate Kid, you know, anybody still see the you know, wax on, wax off, paint the fence, right? This is like the wax on, wax off, paint the fence of how I present grammar food, okay? Really important that it becomes second nature to you. So, using that foo, that basic foo, to explain the difference between active and passive, here it is. An active voice, you got a subject, you got an action, you got an object, the students listen carefully to the lecture, you could just do this. The students listen carefully. You can say that. That's a pretty common everyday statement, actually, if students are listening carefully. So, the students listen carefully. It's active voice. It's active voice because we don't have to say the object. We can if we want to have a super duper complete sentence, but we don't have to. Grammatically, in active voice, you can drop the object. Okay? What you can't do is drop the subject. You can't say, listen carefully to the lecture. That doesn't work unless you're Yoda. So, active voice. Stylistically, it really emphasizes the subject because it makes the subject grammatically necessary to the sentence. No subject, no sentence. Therefore, really emphasized. Passive voice is the bizarro, more awkward, emphasizing something completely different, alternate universe twin of active voice. In passive voice, The lecture was listened to carefully by the students. Just logically, you still have the same, sub the same subject, action, and object. Right? The lecture is not listening to itself. The students are not being listened to. It's still the same elements. But here's the thing. In passive voice, you can say this if you want to. The lecture was listened to carefully. It's awkward, but that is a complete passive voice statement. It's the same grammatically as saying, uh, the earth was created. The word was spoken. Sounds biblical, right? It's because it's King James passive voice style. It's my personal theory that passive voice was created for the Bible. Or to talk about these super awesome supreme beings that we didn't want to invoke their name directly necessarily all the time because remember Old Testament G-O-D like I want to maybe keep that in the, so you can talk about what G-O-D did without having to say G-O-D right passive voice 
passive voice. The lecture was listened to carefully by the students. It was listened to carefully. That's fine. It's a little awkward, but that's because it's passive voice. Here's what you can't do in passive voice. You can't draw out the object. You can't say, was listened to carefully by the students. What? That didn't work. Now I have to know what it was. I have to know what the object was. Okay? So that's why passive voice is just the mirror image of active voice, both stylistically and grammatically. In active voice, you have to say the subject. No subject, no sentence. In passive voice, you have to say the object. No object, no sentence. Therefore, active voice emphasizes the subject, the thing doing the actions. Passive voice emphasizes the object, the thing receiving the actions. There you go. So simple concepts. The devil is in the details. First of all, here's a, here's a procedure to take advantage of the grammatical difference between active and passive, a procedure that you can use to make a thousand percent certain if a sentence is active or passive to begin with. Look at the sentence, identify the subject, identify the main subject of the sentence, take that out, say the resulting sentence out loud. If it's, even if it's awkward, if it could be a complete statement, then it must have been passive voices written because in passive voice, you don't have to have a subject. If there is no subject that you can find to begin with, then it must be passive voice, because that's what a passive voice sentence is. On the other hand, if you have a sentence, and you cut out the subject, and you say it out loud, and it's like, wow, there's no way that's a sentence, then it must have been an active voice sentence, because active voice, you have to say the subject. Okay? You can also do the flip side of the same test by just identifying the, ob the main object and removing that. But most people, in my experience, can hear the difference more if they focus on the subject, okay? But that's a foolproof test, generally. And it's a lot better test for determining is this sentence actually active or passive than just going on your gut intuition. Because you can make an active voice sentence that sounds awkward and that even sounds passive-y, but grammatically it can still be active voice. So. Now the style rules. Rule of thumb, use active voice. Because active voice has lots of advantages for clear workplace, business, technical writing. It generally conveys more information because it forces you to say what's doing the action. Second, it generally uses fewer words. And third, it's how people talk. I don't really know anyone who generally talks like the King James, the King James Bible reads, right? That's pretty odd. That would be maybe fairly common in the 18th century, but not anymore. So if you want to be clear in your writing, clearly write as though you are in a meeting with someone clearly talking to them. That's a good rule of thumb, and that means generally use active voice. However, there are some exceptions, some exceptions. Some situations where for an individual sentence, it would make sense to use passive voice for achieving a particular goal. So let's look at those three situations. The first is, you know that whoever's reading that particular sentence is more interested in the object. So imagine that I'm writing a recommendation letter about Kristen. Okay? So I know that whoever's reading this letter is most interested about Kristen, the, that's the point of the letter. It's about her. So if I have a sentence where I'm talking about something fantastic that Kristen did, obviously I'm going to use active voice for that sentence. Because then I can say, Kristen did this, Kristen did that, Kristen did something else. Kristen is awesome. Every sentence is Kristen, 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 Kristen. Wow, that's great. However, if I have a sentence that I'm talking about something that happened to Kristen, I want to make that passive voice. Because otherwise, I have to bury Kristen way at the end. Like this sentence, the president presented Kristen with an award. I don't want Kristen to be all the way back here. The letter is not about the president. The letter is about Kristen. So for that particular statement, I would want to say Kristen was presented with an award by the president. Make that one passive. Because if the letter is about Kristen, and Kristen is the object of that sentence, we'll put it first. 
use passive voice. Okay. So first style situation where it makes sense to make a sentence passive is if you want to emphasize the object because you know the person reading is most interested in the object of that sentence. Make it passive. That's what passive voice does. Second, you want to take the heat off the subject. Did we have, when we were doing the um, uh, trucking incident memo report, do no field brainstorming, was this a section where we had the discussion of whether we wanted to get someone fired or not? Yes. Right. What was that person's name? I forgot. No. Joe. Joe. Yeah. Do we want to get, and what, where did, what department did Joe work in? I forget. Purchasing, I think. Yeah, purchasing. Joe and purchasing. Let's get rid of Joe. Okay. So let's get rid of Joe. Let's start a section of the report by saying, Joe in purchasing bought the defective tires. Mm -hmm. you, you can't escape that. I mean, that's really highlighting that Joe. Look at that. Mm -hmm. Joe. Joe bought the defective tires. Right? On the other hand, let's say that we want to keep Joe. This was not Joe's fault. We don't want Joe to get accidentally attacked by our memo. So if we still, for some reason, had to include that information of the tires were purchased, they were purchased by Joe, they were defective, how could we say that all in one sentence and take the heat off Joe? I'll give you a hint. You're testifying before con Congress. You want to off roof skate as much as possible. You might make use of this grammatical construction. Mistakes were made. How would you say something like that when you're talking about Joe and these defective tires that Joe bought, unfortunately? <laughs> Let's puzzle it out. We want to de-emphasize Joe, so let's put him at the end, right? The same action, we, we're talking about buying tires, and the object is defective tires. So if we're going to emphasize the object, the defective tires, we want the defective tires to go first. We've got to have an action, and then if Joe's going to be in the sentence, he's got to come at the end in order to like be de-emphasized. So what would a sentence sound like that was ordered like that? The tires were by Joe. There you go. The defective tires. That's the object. OK, well, passive voice. Let's put that first. Let's put the heat on the tires. Second, what's the action? Well, they were bought. OK. Third, what's the subject? Why, Joe? <laughs> you know, maybe we could even get away with uh, uh, defective tires were bought on this date at this place. Let's just leave with that. Right? Mistakes were made. Let's not focus on who made the mistakes. Passive voice. Right? Takes the heat off the object. I mean the subject because it makes the subject grammatically unnecessary, really. Second, something that you can stick in the middle or at the end. And third, something that you could leave out entirely if you want to make it super passive. There you go. And then the third instance. You don't know who or what did the thing, and you don't want to have to awkwardly say, someone discovered the kit. Well, you don't want to have to go around saying, someone or something or some people that I don't know, blah, 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 blah. Right? You just want to say, the cave was discovered in 29. Right? This is about the only situation where passive voice is, common, is commonly used in everyday speech, right? so that we can drop this awkwardness and still talk about stuff that we don't know who did it, but nobody cares. It's that irrelevant. It doesn't even register in your brain necessarily that this is passive because it's just, you assume we're talking to someone who's interested in the cave and when it was discovered, right? There you go, that's the list. Here's what's not on that list use passive voice just because, right? Here's what's not on that list. Use passive voice because you had an essay writing teacher in the past who was a big fan of it, right? In everyday writing, 
for a workplace environment where you want to be clear, easy to skim, easy to understand, compact. Here's a list. You want to de-emphasize a subject. You want to hide a subject. You don't know what the subject is. Or if you want to put the emphasis on the object for that particular sentence. Then, make it passive. Otherwise, use the rule of thumb. Just make it active. Hopefully pretty straightforward advice, um, but like I mentioned, the devil is in the details. So let's do some practice. 